Hello, today we are looking at 1997, the third mechanics question, okay? And so we have this uh, ball rolling down an inclined plane. Um, it says a solid cylinder, not ball, cylinder, uh, with mass m and radius capital R and rotational inertia one half m r squared rolls without slipping down the inclined plane as shown above. The cylinder starts from rest at the height h. The inclined plane makes an angle theta with the horizontal. Express all terms in a... Uh, all solutions in terms of m, r, h, theta, and g. Determine the translational speed of the cylinder when it reaches the bottom of the inclined plane. Inclined plane. So we're looking for v. Remember, uh, translational, that's v. Uh, angular, right, that's omega, okay? Um, but we actually want v. So we're looking for that v. Um, remember, if you go back to our physics toolbox, when you're looking for V, what's usually the best way to find it? Yeah, we want to use energy to find it, okay? So I'm going to set this up. EI equals EF. Let me go ahead and write this part A, okay? Um, and then what types of energy do I have at the very beginning? Yeah, I just have PEG, okay? So I just have PEG at the beginning. And then at the bottom, it's going to be rolling and also moving, okay? So that means... Since it's rolling and moving linearly, I have Ke plus Ke root. Okay, so it's both moving side to side and it's rolling, right? So since I have both of those, I need Ke and Ke root. Okay. So I got this. We can go ahead and plug in. So we have mg, and I believe they define it as capital H and also capital M. So capital M G capital H equals one half capital M um, V squared and remember that V is what we're actually looking for in this question okay plus one half I omega squared okay um, just the formula for KU wrote there uh, remember if you forgot one of these formulas you can just look at your formula sheet and it will tell you uh, those formulas okay now omega cannot be in my answer okay I, I can't leave omega in my answer, so I need to change it to something um, else. Remember, this um, omega r equals v, okay? Which means omega equals v over r, and omega squared equals v squared over r squared, okay? Um, so we need to go ahead and plug that in. So I have capital MGH equals one half capital M v squared plus one half. Now we can also plug in for our i which as you can see in the problem is one half m r squared. So I have one half m r squared and running out of room here a bit. So I'll go ahead and erase that part. Okay, um, and then I have v squared over capital R squared. Now capital R's will just cancel. Also you'll notice that there is a mass in every single term. So I can cancel out that mass, okay. And go ahead and have GH equals one half V squared plus one half times a half is one fourth V squared. Okay, um, so I'll add those two things together. So I'll have three fourths V squared equals G capital H. Okay, and then to solve, I'm just solving for V, so I'll multiply by four thirds. So I'll have four GH capital H divided by three root equals v okay um so not too tricky um uh, the real challenge here is making sure that you're setting it up with torque and not with anything else or sorry with energy and not with something else so let's go ahead and look at part b so part b um this is going to just be a free body diagram so it says on the figure below the circle below Draw and label the forces acting on the cylinder as it rolls down the inclined plane. Your arrow should point should begin at the ap point of application of each force. Um, so that's really an important thing. Um, the reason they're doing that is because they want us to know if there's torque or not. Okay. So first of all, gravity. Where does gravity come from? Gravity comes from the center mass, so that would be right in the middle. So I have mg. You could also label that fg. That's also acceptable. Okay, Fn is another force here, okay, and it's going to be coming from where? What is the thing causing Fn? 
yeah, my incline plane. So it's going to pass through here, and I have Fn there. Okay, and then the last force, um, as it's rolling down the incline plane, um, I have one more force. If it's rolling, I know there must be what? Friction, yeah. So I'll also have friction since I'm going down the incline plane. Friction will be the opposite direction. So I'll have F, F here, okay? And so that would be my free body diagram. Um, before we move on, let's go ahead and just talk for a second here about which one of these have a torque, okay? Um, what is the, well, what's my pivot point? My pivot point is gonna be the center of mass, right? The ball will roll about the center of mass, okay? Which means what's the radius for mg? The radius for mg is gonna be equal to zero, so that's not going to have a torque, okay? Um, now if we look at Fn, the radius for Fn is gonna be right here, okay? So it's gonna be from that this point here to my pivot point, that's my radius. Okay, and you'll notice that the force of Fn and the, pit, er, and the radius are actually parallel. Okay, if they're parallel, well, that means there is no torque, right? This is when you're standing at a door instead of pushing at a perpendicular angle to the door. If you push it parallel to the door, you can't open it, right? Um, so this one, I also have no torque. Okay, so the only thing that's gonna have a torque is going to be from friction so that will have a value okay but everything else will have no torque okay um, that's not really part of B but I just wanted to put that in there um, to kind of explain maybe the next step okay so let's look at part C part C so it says for part C show that the acceleration of the center of mass of the cylinder while it is rolling down the inclined plane is two-thirds G sine theta Okay, um, so if I'm looking for acceleration, uh, what should you use in your tool book or toolkit to solve for acceleration? Hopefully, you said forces. Remember, forces are usually if I'm looking for a specific force or if I'm looking for acceleration. That's usually the best time to use forces. Okay, um, so because this is also rotating though, I'm also going to have to use torque. So I'll use torque and forces. Okay. <clears throat> so, let's set up forces first. I have F net equals MA, right? And that A here, that's actually what I'm trying to solve for ultimately, okay? Now, F net, I need to plug in some of my forces, okay? Um, we're going to do the X direction, okay? Uh, because in the Y direction, we're not actually worried about that right now, okay? Um, in the Y direction, remember, since it's inclined playing, this is my Y direction, uh, this is my x direction, okay, and the y direction I don't need to worry about because it's not moving into or out of the incline plane, right? It's only moving in this x direction, so I'll just focus on that for now, okay? Um, so if we go ahead and look at this part here, that's going to be mg, right? This is the part of mg that's pushing it down the incline plane. That's going to be mg sine theta. Okay, remember this is the example where sine doesn't go with x and, and cosine doesn't go with y. Okay. Um, in case you're curious, this red part here, that would be mg cosine theta. Okay. Now remember for your free body diagram, you don't want to put that in your official free body diagram. If you want to draw another one off to the side to say, okay, this is, uh, this is just for me, that's fine. Um, but when you're answering for a free body diagram for the AP test, you don't want to put components in, okay? That can be points off. So, um, mg sine theta, that's the thing that's really causing me to accelerate, so that's going to be positive. Um, that's in the direction of my acceleration, right? And then I'm going to minus my ff. So minus ff equals ma. Okay? Um, now, Remember, variables that we can have in our answer are m, r, h, theta, and g, okay? ff is not one of those, okay? Now, even if we plug in for ff, right, ff equals mu fn, well, mu is also not something I can answer with, okay? So I'm, I'm stuck with that. I, I need to have another equation, okay, because I have ff as an unknown and a as an unknown. Okay, those are the two things I, I, I don't get to count as having known. And so I need another equation. Okay, and so this is where torque comes in. So I have torque net equals 
pi alpha, okay? And then I know that my torque net, the only forces we did, talked about earlier that is causing a torque is gonna be FF. So I'll have torque from FF equals I alpha, and then I have RFF. And instead of lowercase r, it's capital R. And then I can go ahead and plug in I, which is 1 half mR squared. And then I don't want alpha, right? Because I'm trying to solve for I'm trying to solve for um, a instead of alpha, so I'll take an a and divide by r, okay? Uh, capital R. So all the r's in this question are capital R because the um, radius of this uh, cylinder is capital R, okay? Um, so one of these cancels, and then I have an r over here as well, so that will also cancel. So I have f f equals one half m a, okay? And now you'll notice that I have something that looks like this, okay? And I also have an FF here that I don't know, right? So I actually just can take this whole thing here and plug it up in there, okay? And so I'll write mg sine theta minus one half ma, make, go ahead and make that one capital as well, equals ma, okay? So I'll add that to the other side. So I'll have three halves ma equals m capital M, that's also capital. Um, g sine theta, okay, and the m's will cancel, okay, and then I will multiply, so I'll have by two thirds, oops, so I'll have two thirds g sine theta is equal to a, okay, so that's exactly what the problem was asking for there. Uh, it, it asked for what is the acceleration. And it actually told you that it was two thirds g sine theta, right? Um, and so that kind of goes ahead and gets that answer. So let's go ahead and look at part D, okay? So part, oops, part D, okay. So on part D it says, determine the minimum coefficient of friction between the cylinder and the incline plane that is required for the cylinder to roll without slipping. Okay, so, this is really saying we need to go back and we found our acceleration, but we need to go back and find our F, okay? We need to find out what this F is so that we can find out what our mu is, okay? And why it said minimum is because if friction is higher, it's only going to use sort of the lowest value, right? Once again, this is like if something is stationary, I'm pushing on it, um, it will use the lowest value of mu up until the point that it starts moving, right? There's a maximum mu, um, but it can take other values up to that maximum value, right? So let's go ahead and start with f, f equals mu f n, okay? So I'm trying to solve for mu, okay? Now I know f f because, well, I don't, I don't know f f, let me say it this way. I know f f because I have this right here, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in for f f. So I'll have one half m a equals mu f n. Now you'll notice I can't leave Fn, that's Fn in the equation, because that's not one of the things that counts as me having known, right? It's not one of these variables here, m, r, h, theta, and g. So I'm gonna need to plug in something for Fn. So this is when we're gonna go back to our free body diagram. And remember when we wrote this mg cosine theta, right? That's gonna be equal to Fn, okay? Because those two cancel out, okay? So I know that Fn equals mg cosine theta, uh, capital M, okay? And so now I can plug that in as well. So I have one half m a equals mu m g cosine theta, okay? And we know that the m's cancel. Um, and then I also, I know a, right? So I found a here. So I can go ahead and plug that in as well. So I have one half times two thirds g sine theta equals mu g cosine theta. Okay, and you'll notice that the g's will cancel. Okay, so I have one half times two thirds, so that's one third sine theta equals mu cosine theta. Okay, and to solve for mu, just divide both sides by cosine theta. These will cancel. And hopefully you can remember your trig, ID, uh, trig identity. Now, I don't think this would count off on the test. So if you just left it as one-third sine uh, theta over cosine theta, that should be fine. 
um, but it is a much more elegant solution if you can remember that trig identity that sine over cosine is tangent um, then you have one-third tangent theta as your final answer so part E okay so it says the coefficient of friction mu is now made less than the value determined in part D so the cylinder both rotates and slips. Uh, I indicate whether the translational speed of the cylinder at the bottom of the inclined plane is greater than, less than, or equal to the translational kinetic speed calculated in part A. Justify your answer. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and look at what part A we did for part A. Right. We set this up with energy. Right. Um, so we had energy here. So let's set that up again. Okay. So I'm going to take this whole equation and copy it down here. Right. Because we not only have to give an answer, but we need to justify it. So we have PEG equals KE plus KE rote. Okay, so we know that PEG is going to be the same. Okay, but we also know that KE rote is going to be smaller. Now the reason that KE rote is going to be smaller is because um, it's slipping. This means that it's not going to be rotating as fast as it did the other time. So omega must be smaller, so ke rote is smaller. Okay. Remember, because it's slipping, we know that omega is r does not equal v. Okay. That's the definition of slipping: is that the how it's rotating will not be related to how it's moving linearly. Okay. Um, so we know that's not true. So we know omega would be smaller. So if this whole section of my equation is smaller then we know that my ke must go higher, okay? So that means that the translational speed, um, v, is going to be greater than va, right? So our initial, or our velocity at the bottom of, for this part e, is gonna be greater than the velocity for part a, okay? So, uh, the translational speed. Okay, let's go ahead and look at ii. So for ii, we know that it is sliding, Okay, so if it's sliding, then we actually have that uh, heat being produced by friction, right? If it's just rolling, we're not producing heat by friction because it's uh, stationary friction, right? It's static friction, not kinetic friction. So in the case of where it's actually sliding, then we know that we're actually slipping and that's going to produce heat, okay? So if we're producing heat, then we know that the total Ke has to go down because some of that is going to get split into uh, heat, right? Into heat energy. Okay, so our total Ke is going to be less.